Hey everyone, it's Will Gamer Dad with another video for you. So first off, I'd like to give a shout out to one of my Patreon supporters, Frank Wilson. Thanks for your support. Now in today's uh, video, we're going to go over the farming results that I've had in the last six weeks. And I also wanted to share my thoughts and opinions about um, my feeling, not only about the game, but of the most recent main story update. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. I also do have a Patreon account for those who want to support me this way. So first of all, in terms of uh, what I've been grinding over the last six weeks, at the time of this video, um, initially, uh, after getting Minoka, I did spend a lot of time in Riftbreaker trying to get 10 of her Nemesis Tomes. They definitely dropped less frequently than other tomes, at least in my experience, and so it did take me a little bit of time. I was also running uh, still Antiquity Gar uh, Garlia until I had unlocked the Omegopolis, after which, um, being that that's the newest uh, unit you can grind, aka for Ash Tier, that is what I'm currently working on for now. As of my um, drops, I am still, as of this video, about one uh, Frolin Opus away. I'm also uh, three uh, Fireside Cat treatises away, as well as three of the Volva, aka uh, AS Flams uh, treaties away, among others. Now, um, more importantly though, I wanted to share how I feel about um, just the game and the state of the game in general, as well as my feelings and thoughts about the main story. So first of all, as you well know, um, there have been a number of super bosses that I haven't had a chance to get to or have been a little bit frustrated uh, about them. And of course, you know that the earliest one, I gotta say is almost two months now, is probably the warped Kel'Kale, uh, as well as some of the more recent uh, super bosses uh, gated by the bounty system. And of course, I do have a pretty comprehensive roster. I'm sure if I looked up some uh, videos or even some Japanese Ultima or other guides, I would be able to crack the code as to make a nice little clear. However, that's part of the reason I'm a little bit bothered by things at this moment. Uh, first of all, the way that the game has evolved, especially with the main story part three, um, I expressed some of my frustrations with the way of the exploration and I'll get into more of that um, now, especially since I have been uh, going back to farm some of the materials in, um, you know, with the, uh, I guess, the phase shift and other things. The game, first of all, can be set at all difficulty levels such as easy, standard, and so on and so forth. And being that there was a master level, of course, I'm going to tackle that at master level. That was a pretty big mistake. As much as I have a pretty strong roster and I did have to um, customize a couple of team comps for farming, Farming shouldn't be such a slog where um, you have to soft reset after mobs RNG or for example the environment where you get frozen and just die off or they preemptively outspeed you, um, killing you, they null magic for example or null elder elements, even if you bring a mixed team. Um, there really isn't much in the fact that even bringing other units to level up. You need a full roster of six units, in my opinion, in order to uh, get through even the mobs at master level, much less the bosses, which are the storyline. Again, I know that's a small complaint. Uh, you can always set it a little bit lower. But the fact remains that as a perfectionist, when they give you the option of setting the levels higher, I did do that and it actually grinded out for a couple weeks um, that way. And I think that made my experience of uh, the main story honestly it soured my feelings about the main story um, in that sense not only that but the way that the exploration is so widespread and massive and the fact that uh, a lot of the optional content is gated behind other optional content made it a slog to go through now to be honest um, you can say hey well it's an RPG you're expected to find secrets and so on and so forth now here's the thing it would be fine if I was working with a team of other people and uh, you know sharing thoughts and maybe going to the mega thread on the subreddit or maybe on the discord kind of uh, asking questions and sharing my thoughts and kind of all discovering together or even checking some of the guides online. However, I tried to do this on my own and I actually got through I would say 95% of the content. Um, there were a couple of uh, small things I missed. but. 
even more frustrating. I didn't realize that some of the side quests I unlocked through each chapter weren't meant or unable to be finished at all um, during uh, my journey through until the main story was finished. After which you'd have to go back, loop, revisit each island at different points. Some of, some of the hidden things are actually unlocked by environmental things um, and none of that's actually explained. You just have to guess. Um, there were even a couple of hidden points where you have to just press on grass, which is unmarked for example. Um, I wasn't expecting that level of difficulty for uh, both the exploration as well as um, just the farming in general. So honestly, I'm still working through things and to be fair, a little bit unmotivated to even do multiple phase shifts to kind of get everything all together to kind of side grade or upgrade some of those weapons out there. Much less going to 10 different areas, uh, getting not only phase shifted, but make sure you gather the sparkles and killing off everything, especially in the first few weeks of master mode. So my advice to you, first of all, is don't be like uh, Gamer Dad. Set your difficulty to probably one level below expert or if it's too difficult, even two levels below at veteran, um, you'll have a much better experience. Although, like I said, it's going to take me some time to recover from that PTSD, so to speak. Now, in my second part of my thoughts or frustrations with the game, shall I say, um, the boss's mechanics as we've gotten through uh, some of the more uh, difficult warped fights, uh, starting from I would say even chapter one of the Apocrypha, but even main story and obviously the bounties and so on and so forth. Bosses have gotten more complicated just like our units have gotten more complicated. And as our units have become more scam, aka Alter Shion, Eva Flam, and all those ultra powerful teams that you see us all gloating and uh, parading out there for some of the easier fights like Manifest and other things, as we've developed more scam units and scam mechanics, unfortunately, so has the bosses. Remember a few months ago, I had commented about power creep and it's more of a defensive power creep we're worried about? You see that already, where when we first fought bosses, like if you look back four years to the bosses we fought, uh, for example, either in the main story or even in other lands, some of the toughest content back then, which I remember uh, slogging through and having some difficulty, the difficulty was of a different nature. Even the Ember Magic Dragon, which stumped a lot of people, you only had to figure out, hey, the move rotation, obviously, and then you just have to figure out a solution to that. So you could, for example, if you know the enemy is going to be doing a fire elemental attack, you can either do a type shield, aka Mario, or you can do a, 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 you know, a fire shield, aka from Aqua Wall or things like that. If you know the attack is going to come very powerfully, you can bring out a, ta a tank such as Annabelle, rotate people to the back. You can find solutions through just by strictly managing your rotation and as uh, things went on, you could do dual debuffs and things like that. In the last six months to year, I mean after the dual hat shows specifically, uh, especially with the warped content, not only are you worried about move rotation um, and mitigating damage that way, they have HP stoppers, which by themselves aren't too difficult. However, at each HP stopper, and some of them have multiple HP stoppers, they do things. They do nasty things. They can either attack you um, or inflict status or do a 99% or they can stack in the case of some of the newer bounty hunts where they can stack attacks back to back. So the HP stopper will do an attack and if you brought it down to the HP stopper itself, it'll also do an additional attack, all of which is either uh, unmitigated or they'll remove your buffs ahead of time and so on and so forth. Like the warped Alma, with the exception of using an Efi led team, was a nightmare in the fact that the t uh, bosses did do things like that. In the in the um, bounty, not only are you worried about now these kind of uh, mechanics at the HP stopper, and there can be multiple of them, there's also the environmental effects or the auras that, which can um, be manipulated. So for example, if you attack its weakness, it's going to counter that way. If it does different things, that, that changes the fights and the mechanics a lot more. And the my boss mechanics are so complicated that um, my friend actually looked up one of the Warp Kelkale um, guides online on, I think, Ultima, because I was like, this is a ridiculous fight. And my friend, of course, is a more casual player than I am. He looked it up and he said, Will, no wonder you're having trouble with this fight. The, the page that describes some of the moves and what it does and the phases 
it's a, it's a page long. It's a whole page long to describe just the mechanics of the fight. Not even, um, you know, what team to bring, not even like anything out there. Just to explain the mechanics of the boss took a page. And you know that if you were actually looking up guides for some of the newer bosses, they do a crap load of things. And, you know, the frustrating part for me is that if I'm not using guides, which I'm currently not using um, to do any fights, I kind of try to figure things out myself. If I get killed with a certain move or moves, okay, I can work around to find out the rotations and I can work around mitigation. Keep in mind that even 50 for 50 with a 50 shield may not be enough to mitigate some of the fights out there. After that, say I squeak my way to an HP stopper. Hey, guess what? You just got slapped, you die, and then you have to figure out a way to get there and then find a way to overcome that mechanic if you can read it or know what it does. And that's, again, without any help from other uh, team members or anything like that since I will work solo for the most part. Even in the past, my kids used to do things along with me, but they've been a little bit farther behind and they're also quite uh, frustrated with the game. Like my youngest, being that he's uh, the second most keen uh, player out there, he actually looked up other online guides on YouTube because Gamer Dad wasn't either able to do it yet or just that far behind because I can't explain the mechanics if I'm getting one shot slapped or things like that. So he's actually beaten all the bounty fights, uh, Warp Kel KL and all the other things, and Gamer Dad's kind of left behind. And again, Emphasize that, of course, all content can be beaten with free content, with free teams. Um, obviously, if you have a comprehensive roster, you really shouldn't have any issues beating anything. But figuring out everything on your own is difficult, and I'm going to say that it has been quite tiring. Uh, not only that, but obviously from a personal standpoint, uh, I've been uh, covering holidays while my friend, my friend and co-worker has been away. I myself have been on holidays, uh, which, you know, gave me some chance to kind of reevaluate uh, where I am in the game, but also my priorities in terms of spending time with family and uh, kind of recovering myself uh, versus grinding out videos on YouTube and being a content creator and even just like uh, kind of trying to enjoy things. And, um, you know, I have to say, I've lost my love of the game just a little bit. Not that I hate the game. Don't get me wrong. The overall slog is not what it used to be before. Um, I'm finding it difficult to keep up even with the grind like the red key, uh, the red keys if I'm running Toto Theater World are taking a little bit longer uh, running the new dungeon is taking longer it's not like a you know like one or two minutes it's taking up a lot more time and even if you want to do phase shift once or twice a day it's also taking a lot of time even setting down to expert level as opposed to master level which obviously ate up a lot of time and so um, one last thing I want to say about boss fights in general and so kind of my frustration with that other than the fact that you know figuring things out is a task in itself um, I remember with the last era of dual hatcho fights they were difficult in their own right and I will say I had some trouble but I will say I'm pretty proud of being able to figure out um, good strategies and alternative strategies and keep in mind that for me I actually held back and didn't have to use all my power what I meant by that is me Melissa led teams were actually one of the highest uh, led meta at that time. I purposely didn't put Melissa in any of my box clears and it was still very doable. Like I was able to use slightly older units. I didn't have to upgrade all my units right away. And even at that point, my teams were um, capable enough provided you can stall or kind of find ways around the boss's rotations in order to con conquer all of them. I would argue that nowadays um, I find that I haven't actually upgraded anyway for a long time. I have the materials and the chance scripts and the treatises for most of them, but I kind of wanted to do all at once, um, just because, just for organization and so on and so forth. However, I find that using older teams, they are extremely difficult to kind of manage into putting into the fights, and most of them are actually probably not capable of taking on some of the super bosses or current content in the game. I'll give you an example. When I beat the Gustav, um, super boss from the bounty hunt that is my most powerful pierce team with a 120 light uh suzette uh, es sukiya as nakoko i mean sorry as um yukino which is pretty broken in his own right and then of course as sheila which is not that broken and even spamming like crazy i couldn't do a two turn af for one billion damage i know that the environment obviously reduces type damage and so on and so forth but other teams uh, more recent type teams or newer units were clearly able to do that um, with the likes of AS Nakoko, Ultra Sakia, things like that. And, you know, back in the day, you didn't have to do that. So um, 
I find that the race to upgrade units is much higher nowadays. So let me know in the comments below what you think about uh, what I've said and hopefully I'll continue creating content for you in the future. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.